I know what some of you all are thinking. You're like, oh, we weren't gonna get an intro this week. I fooled you. Of course you're getting an intro, obvi. Goodness, don't be silly. Also, for those of you who keep tagging me and like, oh, so-and-so, this fiber place is having a sale. You know that's rude. You know I have no self-control and I'm literally buying everything right now. Please stop. Don't, actually don't. Keep letting me know. I need all the things. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Take 16. Peacemakers, welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, coming to you from a sunny Chicago today, this Saturday, May 8th. Um, welcome to anyone who is checking out this video for the first time. Welcome. I hope you enjoy all of the crafty goodness, fibery goodness that I have to share with you. And for those of you returning, what's up? Welcome back. <laughs> You already know what we're about to get into. Hello, everyone. Um, oh, if you would like to find me, you can follow me on Instagram at Peace for Peace Crafting, on Ravelry, I'm Peace for Peace Craft. And if you like music, like a lot of us do, you can check out the community playlist that I have set up over on Spotify at Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast Playlist. Feel free to add a couple songs if you want keep all of us jamming out and having a good time all together. I think that's it. Yes? Looking at notes. Um, all right, you all. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, the past two weeks have been long. And honestly, I like sort of forgot like, oh yeah, you have to like do this tomorrow because it's just been like never ending two weeks. They've just been like long and I think it's because last weekend I had to work one of the days so like my work week just was really long anywho that's not your problem it's mine and I'm here now <laughs> so let's hang out let's get into some fun fibery stuff before we start I do want to um, do a couple hollerbacks um, a few podcasts that I are new to me actually two of them just started so let's do that first because we all need new things to throw into the shuffle right like we all have the people that we love watching maybe there's some new people who we don't know about yet so I just want to share a couple of those with you so the first one is Janine she just recently started a podcast and the name of her podcast is Franken Frog Fiber Podcast <laughs> Uh, she's out of Toronto. She's a is she a drama teacher, drama school teacher, drama not drama school, a drama teacher at like an art school, whatever. Anyway, love her energy. <laughs> she's super goofy. I think she only has one episode out right now. Totally worth checking out. Next is um, a yarn tail. And that's Karen. She's also from Chicago. She actually was one of the winner, or she actually, no, she participated in the Kinship and Friends Cow. And I was going back through, like, looking at photos and stuff, and I clicked on her profile on Instagram, and I was like, wait, she has a podcast? Let me go and check this out. She has a few episodes out. I went through, obviously watched them all. They're not very long. Um... I think she's a new-ish knitter, like maybe since the pandemic, um, but really great, super fun. I love watching people who are just learning about the craft, like just start getting into it, but also making like the dopest stuff ever, like right out of the gate. It's great. You should check it out. I'll link, I'll link everything below, obviously. Um, if you've been here, you know that. I will link it below <laughs> in the description box. And then the last one is um, 
she was one of the winners of the thousand subscriber giveaway. Her name is Kendra. She's also from Chicago. She's a balanced skein. She just recently started a podcast. I think she's absolutely hilarious. I love following her on Instagram. Her stories make me giggle all the time. Um, but yeah, she does like a monthly, or she did, it's only one episode out. She's like a monthly roundup sort of thing um, where she just talks about some of her new, some of her makes. And I believe she's a new knitter too. And she's, all, again, another one who's making like such fire stuff already that I'm just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. Love that. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I love watching people just like get into new fun I feel like I'm doing this a lot today. Uh, getting into new crafts and trying out new stuff. It's really great. So go check them out. I'll link them below. Show them some love. Uh, I think you all will enjoy it. All right. All righty. So packages for the Kinship and Friends Cow prizes have all been sent out. So people have been sort of tagging me. They've been receiving them. It's like... It's so cool and fun and exciting to like have people one like donate things, which mind blown. I can't believe that everyone is well, I can't believe that everyone is so generous. But then just to see people receiving the things and just being very happy and grateful is like very heartwarming. So I love that. Just like spreading all the love all over. Um, it's really precious. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who donated. And I hope everyone who is receiving one of the packages is enjoying or has enjoyed uh, looking at patterns, figuring out what you're going to do, or just adding it to the stash so that you can look at it later, admire it. Um, I think that's it for, let me look, for updatey things. All right, y'all have a lot ish not really kind of sort of whatever I have some things to share with you all this week so I think um first up I'm gonna do it in this order so Gary who is also a winner from the kinship and friends cow um suggested that I call this segment I think he said spin spin sugar which is a song title um, and I kind of like that. So this week in Spin Spin Sugar, if you also, if you have uh, <laughs> a recommendation for segment names, drop them below or send me a message on Instagram. I got some stuff done. So first up, I'll do this. So I think last time I showed, I was, I had started um, some fiber that I'd gotten from um, the Sneaky Knitter and I'm pretty sure I did. And it was a, uh, I just had like half a bobbin done or one bobbin done um, from that. And it, the colorways that she, oh my gosh, words. The colorway that she dyed the fiber up in was called the client and it's 100% Falkland. And this is what it turned out to be. So this is, um, I did a two ply. You all, I'm so geeked about this. I did a two ply and I got these little tags so that I can remember everything because the universe knows I will forget. So it's a two ply. It ended up being 300 yards. It's about 114 grams weighing things out. It's 100% Falkland. Um, and it's like a finger, oh no, it's a sport weight knocking on a fingering weight store. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm like super jazzed about it. I was telling my housemates, I think, because I'm trying, like this is all new to me, right? Spinning world. And I'm trying to try out a lot of different fibers and the Falkland, I'm really here for. Like, it's a little bit toothy. It didn't make me feel like I was going bananas um, trying to spin it up. So I really want to buy more of it. I'm in love with this. Really excited the way that it turned out. 
I have no idea what any of these things that I'm going to show you are going to be. I'm just enjoying the process um, because spinning it and using it are two different things, according to uh, Justin and Caleb over at uh, The Bearded Pearl. And I agree with that. Like, I don't, this doesn't have to be anything. I just had fun spinning it up. So this is number one. Absolutely love. The second one I did was um, the last, well, not the, yeah, the last, not the last of the colors that I received from Knit Picks. And um, so this is the last one that was actually a color. Yeah, or dyed, I guess. So this one, pay no mind to my little yellow ties. This one is, um, oh, I didn't write the yardage down. That's a bummer. Uh, I know that it's a DK weight and it's chain plied, so a Navajo ply on it. And this is the Arctic Pool Heather. And this is um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And I can actually undo this one. I love the way this one turned out as well. It's really pretty. Um, I thought, I think the more I do it, obviously, the better it's getting, but the chain ply on this one worked out really well. And um, yeah, I really want to use all the nitpick stuff in one project, I think. I have some some like undyed of their gloss roving that I think hopefully by the next episode, I'm gonna try because I can't do um, I can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna try something and not go completely bananas with it. So I'm gonna try dyeing it up just with like Kool-Aid and food coloring for funsies first um, and see just like what happens. So that should be fun. This one I know is a D is it came out to be a DK. So just like the others, um, it's a DK weight. I don't know why I didn't write down the yardage. I must've just forgotten. I know I have it written down <laughs> probably on, um, my state farm thing from last time. It's somewhere written down. So yeah, super jazzed about this one too. It's really beautiful. Another lovely color. Last thing um, was another braid that I'd gotten from uh, a sneaky knitter. And this one This one was called um, Flattery. And so what I did, oh, this one um, ended up being about 354 yards and it's a fingering weight. Now, for my friends that spin, I know that, like when you look at yardage things, it's like, oh, 380 to whatever, four, 80 is like a fingering weight if you buy it but when you spin it up like what's like a good measure of like oh I did a I did enough enough like you spun a lot of it I don't really know what I'm saying help me out my spinning friends like what's a good a good amount of yardage that you would get for it anyway I got 354 of a fingering weight it's a two ply I was really happy with it so what I did with this one was I split the braid in half and then I spun them opposite one another. So I knew that I started one end and then the opposite end and then two plied them together to get this bad boy. I love it. The colors are crazy. That, te that like, I want to say teal, but it's not teal. That like bright blue, sea foamy maybe color, I love. So some of the parts are, here I can undo this one too. Some of them there's like sections where it's just like just the darker color. Some of it is just the blue together, like they spun together when applying it. And then other ones you can definitely see like, oh, there's like, <laughs> there's uh, colors that overlapped, which is really, it's pretty dope. So I was super excited about this one as well with the, the first one that I showed, the Falkland, I, is it Fractal? Where I like split the braid in two, spun one of them just like straight. And then with the other half, I split it up into, 
I think eight eight smaller sections and then just did them one right after another. So you get like smaller little bits of the repeat um, on one bobbin and then the other one was just like all of the colors straight through, which ended up being really lovely. I'm obsessed with that one actually. This one too, I'm like, yes please. I have some more um, fiber from this dyer, is that what you call them? Sure, yes. Um, so <laughs> some more fiber from this shop. I will definitely link this below too. I'm really in love with the things that I bought from there. I think everything's spinning up really great and really lovely. Did I say what this was called? Flattery? Okay, this one's flattery, fingering weight, love it. Adding it to the pile of all the things. Next up, something I'm working on is I got some, sorry, grabbing things. I got some fiber from Utopia Fiber Shop, which is like a mill, sort of close to me. I think they're in Wisconsin. I'm pretty sure they're in Wisconsin. I'll double check if they're in Wisconsin. Um, and so I started spinning up one of their braids. How am I gonna do this? So here's what the fiber looks like on its own. It's like purpley, blue, some reds. And this is their, it's 100% wool, almost positive, and it's their Helix mix. And so this mix, according to what I read on their website, is they take all of the like leftover bits from like when they're carding stuff, and they just compile it into one, recard it, and then they sell it in these little balls. So each thing is gonna be a little bit different um, depending on when you buy it. So I was like, oh, that sounds really awesome. Let me try that. So spinning this up right now, this is, it's almost half because I, I have some of it on the wheel right now. But here's one bobbin that I did all spun up. And it's really cool because the purple is pretty dominant, but you can definitely see um, the little bits of the, <laughs> can you get any closer? Um, of the red and the blue. And there's even parts it's hard to tell here, but I definitely notice it like as it's being spun up. There's a little bit of yellow in there too. So what I think I'm gonna do with this is um, spin the rest of this one up. And I'm trying to work on consistency, obviously, and I wanna get it thin, because I would like for this to be a fingering weight too. Um, and I'll just two-ply it once that one is finished being spun up. So that's sort of my like whip of my spinning stuff. I'm really excited about this. It's been really a great time. Like I try to divvy up when I'm doing things. So like some mornings or switch it up, I guess. Some mornings I'll get up and whatever. I'm, I'm up early anyway. So I'll get up, have my tea or coffee, spin for a little bit, or some days I'll knit for a little bit. And then maybe I'll try to do a little bit during lunch and then in the evenings, flip a coin basically. What are we doing today? What do I feel like working on? Yeah, and then just go from there. So I feel like it seems like it's a lot. It's also a lot because I'm new at it. So I'm like, I wanna practice, I wanna try, I wanna like know what's going on. Um, but also it's just fun. So I'm digging that. All right, I think that's it for, what did I call it? Spin Spin Sugar. Yes. Uh, so I'm super excited to show you how those turn out. At some point, I'm gonna have to start knitting with all of this, or not. I'm just giving it away. I'm not giving it away. I might give it away. I'm not gonna give it away. All right, let's get into some knitting. I think that's it for spinning stuff, yes? Yes. Okay, first up, finished object. So I did the Grace Pillow Knit Along with Denise Bidone of Bidone Handmade. And I've done a few of her knit alongs now. I usually help out and moderate them. So if you haven't ever done a knit along with Denise, one, 
you should because her patterns are awesome two you should join the zoom meetups because we can hang out and you get to hang out with denise and three i love um i think i've talked about this in the past too with other things that i've made during those no longs it's just like the sense of community and togetherness that's um fostered in those meetups is really awesome and you get to meet some really cool people and it's nice to see people who have done multiple now come back i get really excited i'm like oh my gosh so and so like it's so nice to see you like what's up anyway she had just a really quick make along for the grace pillow and you all i i was like i'm gonna do this at some point and then after the first meeting uh i waited and on like wednesday yeah wednesday of that week so this was not this was like two weeks ago two weeks ago it doesn't matter um decided that wednesday i was gonna just cast on and friday the pillow was done so here it is what so it's it's probably gonna get a little bit blown out here but let's see there we go so it has three cables <laughs> down the front uh to just like the grace pullover that she has and the thing that's really great about this is it's done in it's so big it's done in well i did mine in bernat blanket i think it was written for like the bernat baby whatever so it's huge yarn one i think it's it's done on like size 11 us 11s so i believe in the pattern it says it's like two stitches per inch so it i mean so quick so quick and for mine i did a slight modification so it's written for a smaller pillow and i when i went to michael's they only had 20 by 20s so i just did two more inches of the cable repeats so that it would fit the pillow and I think it looks awesome I'm I don't know the color let's just say it's white cream um, but I had some of it in stash and I didn't have a ball band on it because a friend who was moving gave me a bunch of stuff and it didn't have a ball band on it but I do know that I have another one of these balls and so I'm gonna make another one to match it the other dope thing is with this she has in the pattern let me see if I can take one off. How to make these little, of course, now that I have to do it while I'm recording, I'm not going to be able to. Um, these little toggles. Oh, my goodness. Come on. You're just going to sit and watch, <laughs> watch me try to take these off. Um, oh, I'll just show you like this. So these little toggles, right? And they're on both sides. They're reversible. They should be easy to take off, but obviously <laughs> I'm having trouble um, right now. But the great thing about it is because it's acrylic and these pop off, um, you can use it indoors or outdoors, which is great. And if it gets dirty, you just take the toggles off and you throw this bad boy in the wash and then slip it back on your pillow. So this was really great. It was literally like two days to make. Highly recommend Grace Pillow, Denise Bidon. Check it out. Super fun. I actually can't wait to make the second one. Um, so we can have two on our couch. It's gonna be so nice. Next thing, this is, um, it's sort of finished, but it's finished. It's sort of finished. It's kind of hoish, <laughs> if you will. Uh, so, <laughs> I think I mentioned before, I had a friend who just recently had a kid. Uh, she asked me to make her little nugget something, and I was like, yes, absolutely. And I don't have the cover page, because disaster. But I decided that I was going to do the Gramps cardigan. It's black and white, because I wanted to save some of the ink in our printer. So I'm doing... The little nugget size now for this i think i'm deciding let me show first 
Oh, you are. So I'm using um, some Can I Get a Vow? Vanish Choice. The blue doesn't have a ball band. But I think it's called Blue Jean or Denim. I think it's Denim. And this one, this gray, is just Silver Heather. Are the two colors I'm using. So both acrylic. Oh, I can't. Look at this little... It's so precious. So, it's the Grams cardigan. It has a little shawl collar, which was really fun to make, actually. All I have to do is add buttons to it. I actually really liked how you do the buttonholes in this one. So to add the buttons, weave in all the ends. Now the pattern calls for pockets. And I think I'm just gonna leave them out. Like the child is, this is this, I made the six month to a year old size. I'm like, they don't need pockets. I mean, it's cute aesthetically, like to have them on there. And I also think I'm gonna leave out the arm patches on the elbows just cause I just want it to look very like streamlined, you know? Although I do love it. I like think I wanna make this pattern for myself and then add all those things to it. Um, so with this, I did go up, cause I get nervous about making things for little kids sometimes, clothing. Cause like they grow really quickly. So I think the pattern is written for a six seven, US six sevens, and I went up to seven eights um, to do this one. And I think it turned out pretty boss. Like when I, also, if only adult size things knit up as fast as kid size things, that would be amazing. So it's using Vanish Choice, it's acrylic. They can wash it and throw it in the dryer because kids are messy. Um, yeah, and this is living in, okay. This is very exciting. This is living in this new bag that I got. So I played bingo with the guys at um, Fiber Hustle. So fun. Met Angel, who is of the Scrappy Angel. Where's her little card? Ah! Here's her, yeah. <laughs> Here's, are you gonna focus? Here's her card. And she was like, oh, do you mind if I, can I send you something? Absolutely. We love some piece mail over here. So she sent over one of these bags. Loves it. It's got little peacocks on it with little hearts. It's adorable. I love it. Like as soon as it came in the mail, I was starting this cardigan and I was like, well, that's what you're gonna be living in. The cool thing about this bag is um, it has a wire frame in it. Oh, things are getting caught. One second. It has a wire frame in it. So the bag just sits open because there's wire in here, which is really great. So when you're working on the project, it just like hangs out. Um, you don't have to worry about it like falling in on itself. It's really dope. So thank you for sending that over. And if that wasn't enough, sorry, I'm trying to close this. Her, grabbing two things, her daughter-in-law, who is Whiskers and Stitches, also makes stitch markers. What? And sent these over. Now, I'm gonna say that they're all, can you? Shaky, shaky. They're all um, like jewel tone birthstone colors. I'm going with birthstones because I think that's fun. So these are really cool. Love this big, huge loop thing on it. So this I've been waiting to show you all so that I can throw it in that project bag. Um, so thanks, I love these two. One can never have enough stitch markers. And because people are insanely generous, Angel also sent over a bag for one of you. And this one has zebras on it with fun colored little stripes and this like peachy little zipper. So they're really great. There's pockets on the inside. 
This one is also wireframed. Is that what you would say? Wire? It's wireframed. It has wire in it. And each of the bags has a little, a cute little angel stitch marker on them, which is, or progress keeper, whatever you want to use it for. So cute. So it's a little bit wild to think that I have a giveaway pile now <laughs> from <laughs> people being so generous and sending things over. So I guess that means I have to do some sort of along again so I can give some more stuff away, which is, I was telling one of my housemates yesterday, like so fun to see people getting this stuff. It's like, yes, we're all making things and like that's the gift of, is of, of crafting is like, oh, I have this thing at the end of it. But then like, you know, it's a fun little bonus when people can send you stuff in the mail and it made me feel really nice to be like, oh yay, they got something. This is so cool for participating, <laughs> yay. So thank you, this, I'm putting it back in the bag so it stays nice. So this will be added to the donation pile, weird, uh, for future giveaway, opportunity, prizes, things. Uh, last up is a little bit of progress, another whip on my, yeah, this one is for real a whip. So that one is like, ish, so it just has a little bit to go. This one is for real a whip. So these are the socks I was working on. Here's what I have left of the yarn. Finally at the like limey greens, the bright neons. Excuse me, this is um, the Alex Creates yarn that I was gifted. And excuse me, it is um, in the Loch Ness Monster colorway. So I'm doing my socks. Let me make sure that things aren't falling. Doing my socks two at a time. I just did, here, let's hold them up like this. So they're being done on um, 2.25s, US 1s, on some Chowgu needles, and I'm obsessed, and I'm dropping things. So the I'm doing them top down, <laughs> my gosh. Uh, and I love how the, the ombre is sort of really, you can really see it now. What? So the heels, turn it around. What is happening? The heels are like really green or limey, neony. And I just think this is super fun. So I have a little bit left to go in the, where am I? <laughs> oh. <laughs> What are you doing? Um, I'm finishing up doing the gusset right now, so I'll be on the foot part soon. Um, so I'll hopefully get a chance to work on that a little bit, a little bit today, and finish that up. Uh, I'm, these were just vanilla socks that I decided I was going, <laughs> I was gonna add the. Can you, I don't know if you can see. You can see a little bit. Um, some little pearl bumps going off of the wave of change pattern, which is by Denise Byron. It's a sweater pattern uh, to them, which was it Rob commented? Like they look very 80s, like a scrunch sock. And I'm really, I love that. Okay, here's something. So since this yarn, I think it's a four ply, right? I was a little bit nervous that they looked a little big at first. I was like, oh no. Like I always cast on 72. Um, I just sort of like do the ribbing until the ancestors tell me that's enough. Like sometimes it's 15 rounds, sometimes it's, it's just like, eh, that's enough. Like I'm good. Um, it's sort of like cooking, right? If you season your food, some people measure, some people just like go until they get the signal from the ancestors. Like the food has been seasoned enough. Anyway, I'm doing the same thing with these socks. So... It looked really big to me, maybe because of the ply, but once I got to, once I started doing the heel flap, I tried them on and I was like, oh, these are perfect. I don't know why I was doubting myself. So the foot will be done hopefully soon and I have some really dope ombre socks. I'm going to continue the pearl bump, I think, just on the top portion of the foot. Obviously not on the bottom of the foot, that would be weird. Or maybe it wouldn't, I think it would be weird. 
um, just along the top and then probably the last pearl bump will be before I start the decreases for the toe but I guess we'll see when we get there I'm really enjoying these these are super fun they've been my like sorry not to bend out of the camera um they've been just like really relaxing because they're mostly just like stocking it in the round and then every so often you just throw in a little pearl row has been really nice so that's that oh my gosh is that it maybe i can't believe that you guys i sort of forgot that i was wearing <laughs> wearing this hat if you haven't seen in past episodes this is my coffee talk toque by tracy miller um and it's in the whiskey colorway let me just pose by trilogy yarns it's a dk weight hat i love it i'm obsessed with it i guess i just put it on this morning and was like this is what we're doing today which is fine sometimes it bees like that all right cool last thing we have <clears throat> music rec again if you enjoy music you can feel free to pop on over to the spotify playlist we have and um, check out some tunes that people have put in there. I try to, not try, I do. I put the songs that I recommend in the playlist um, for people to jam out to, but obviously feel free to go and listen to the whole album if you would like. So this week, I am gonna throw it back, which is also a really great Missy Elliott song. That's a side note. Um, this is an album that I really love. Uh, it's from 73 I think and it's Dr. Buzzard's original Savannah band what the album cover is so cool it's like very big band now the music is like sort of big bandy but not real not what you think of like <laughs> what was that not what you think of like traditional big band I guess anyway giving you soulful sounds fun fun jams um my recs for this would be um, Che Che's La Femme is really good. Uh, I Play the Fool, so good. Um, We've Got It Made is fun. And um, Sun Showers. Now, Sun Showers, um, if you know M the artist M.I.A., she sampled sun showers for a song by the same title on one of her albums so maybe i'll put that song in the playlist too so you can hear like what the original is and then how the sample was what blah, 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 how the sample was used <laughs> in the mia song um but this album's a good time it's like fun early morning for me early morning just like get your day going make you Move your shoulders, move your hips a little bit. So check out Dr. Buzzard's original Savannah, Savannah Band. Um, yeah, great album. So much fun. So much fun. All right, you all, I think, I'm like looking around just to double check, but I feel like that's it for this week. So a little pinch shorter of an episode. Again, I thank everyone who is returning for coming back and just wanting to spend a little bit of time with me um, while you're crafting or doing whatever it is you're doing. You could be washing dishes for all I know. Um, but for coming back and hanging out with me and if this is your... I'm knocking things over. You coming for me? Um, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to do all that fun YouTube stuff. So like subscribe comment if you want ring the bell so you know when new episodes have are being released um yeah i think that's it i'm pretty sure that's it <laughs> until i see you all next time i hope everyone stays safe and there's warm weather wherever you are so you can at least get outside for a little bit and yeah until the next time make a peace spread some peace peace